and I'm a fourth year visual arts student at Emily Carr University. Um, my nation is Alexis Nakota Sioux Nation in Alberta. So I'm Cree and Nakota Sioux. And today I'm going to show you how to do some moose hair tufting. A lot of people don't practice this moose hair tufting or caribou hair tufting anymore these days. So I'm trying to pass on this knowledge and I grew up not knowing what this was. I've just seen it on people's clothing and I never really thought about what it was until I came here at Emily Carr. That's where I learned how to do moose hair tufting, which was about two years ago, I'd say. When I first started doing this, I thought it was a very fascinating art form. So I wanted to pick it up myself and explore that. I did these um, maybe a year and a half ago, baby shoes. So I did the beadwork and the tufts around here. So uh, First Nations tribes like to utilize every part of the animal and there's a lot of scrap pieces as well that are used and primarily we use them for tufting. So there's different types of fur that are used, caribou hair and moose hair. We like to use this type of hair because it's coarser and it's hollow and that's what causes it to puff up. As an example because it's since the coarseness makes it want to form into like a puff and then this is a piece of caribou hair we like it because it's a lighter color so it's, it's easier to dye with um, natural dyes but nowadays we use like just basic fabric dyes here and we would traditionally use ochre or different types of berries to create these dyes this is a piece of moose hair right here Moose hair is different from caribou because there's only one part on the moose that you can use the that has the ideal hair for tufting. So this is just from the one piece, but caribou you can use a lot of the, the fur um, as opposed to moose. In Canada there are many tribes that use this type of um, decoration basically. It's a, a long passed down craft that is used for just decorating different types of clothing items as embellishing different types of jackets and moccasins. It's usually a floral design or berries, um, something along nature. It's not really used to depict any sort of um, like history as in war scenes or anything like that. So the materials that I'm going to use, I'm going to use some of this white uh, caribou and it's not dyed yet so that's why it's so white and clean. And then what I like to use is I like to use sinew because it's very strong and uh, you're going to be pulling, pulling it tight so you don't ever want to use anything that will break or else that will ruin your whole tuft. And then you want some sharp scissors. Um, Preferably really small ones that you can get like really detailed in there. Um, this is kind of an example of what, I, what I'm going to be doing. I'm just going to be doing one tuft though. And then I want to show the back. I used a, a type of linen thread. So it was really thick. Um, that's if you don't have any access to any sinew. Also you can use beading thread. You just have to be careful. There are different types of thread that you can use if you don't have any access to sinew, but you want to make sure that it's very strong. So the typical nylon beading thread is just fine to use. So when you start off, you want to start with your sinew. So I'm going to grab some of that. And sinew comes really thick, so you're going to want to um, take it apart. See how thick it is? So when you take it apart, it comes, you just rip it in half, basically. So that's how you make it thinner. 
because you want it to fit through your needle that you're going to use. And when you use your needle, you're going to, you can use a sewing needle or a beading needle. Um, you just want to make sure it'll fit your, your sinew. So you want to find preferably a larger needle. Um, depending on what you're sewing your um, tufts to, like this thick hide right here, you're going to want use a glove or needle. So it's made for piercing through hide. So when I start, what I like to do is I like to grab a good amount so that you can get a nice full pom-pom. So I typically use around this much so that you'll get a fuller pom-pom. So from there, what I do is you take your sinew or your beading thread. And what I like to do is wrap it around twice. So that's once, and then here's twice. And from there, you're just going to tie it in a basic, uh, basic knot. It is the hair that I'm going to tie up. So I take my sinew. From there, you're going to tie it. Next, what you have to do is you take your scissors and you're going to cut it off of this piece of um, hide. So I'm going to cut it. So what I do, I take my thumb and my index finger and I kind of squish it flat, like so. And then from there, I'm going to cut around it to keep that round shape. So I go like this. So I'm going to cut it. Now you've got to begin uh, shaping the pom-pom into a little round shape. So it'll look like this. And then from there, I'm going to cut around it to keep that round shape. So I'll go like this. And then you're just going to keep on doing that until you get it smaller and nice and tight and puffy. This is uh, where you can where you have the most control in whether you're going to get kind of a messy bigger tuft or a nice and neat one. So the more time you spend on it, it can be tedious, but the outcome is great as the more time you spend on it. And from here, um, the different shapes that um, advanced tufters make is they usually combine different pom-poms to get multicolors or just bigger sizes. Um, the shaping depends on your ability, basically. Uh, you can make sharp leaves or just the regular round ones. Like here, you can see that the little leaves, it goes to a point. Okay, so I'm going to be making a tuft out of red now. And moose hair tufts, um, when you dye it, they're typically done with um, regular uh, fabric dye nowadays you get about more vibrant colors than, and they last longer as well. So I'm going to start. So I'm going to take my section. And I'm going to take my sinew and wrap it around once and then twice. From there I'm going to hold onto the hair so that they don't go everywhere. So they stay in one spot, and you typically want to tie it near the base more so that you can get the better quality uh, hair because it's thicker. And from here, this is where you pull it tight and then it'll flare out like this. You want to make sure you don't pull it too tight, but you still want to make sure it flares out enough. Next, what you have to do is you take your scissors and you're gonna cut it off of this piece of um, hide. 
And now I'm going to trim one end because I won't need it anymore. You'll just need one to sew it down. So this is where you are right now. Now you've got to begin uh, shaping the pom-pom into a little round shape. So what I do, I take my thumb and my index finger and I kind of squish it flat, like so. Because I'm going to thread it. You just thread your pom-pom through your needle and then have your your material prepped so I'm going to poke it through so you're at this point and then you just want to tie it off as well to tie it off I have it like this it's all the way through I'm going to pierce the hide a little bit and right close to where it's coming out and then I like to wrap my sinew around the needle about twice pull it down and then you pull your needle through that way you get a nice close knot so it's very secure and it won't be loose you just have to clip clip your sinew off now and from here if you don't like the shape that your pom-pom is you can shape it from there too as well so say I want to make a sharp point on it, I will take my scissors and kind of make a sharp point, like so. And then you can clean up your edges on it. Just got to make sure you don't cut your pom-pom off of the hide. And from there you would just clean off your hide. This is just the start of making your five petal flower with the pointed edges. This one does not have um, any pointed edges, but this is a five petal flower that you can create. Uh, and then you can also double it to make bigger pieces like these other sh baby shoes that I made. The, the pink petals here are doubled, um, they're doubled pom-poms so that you can get bigger sizes because it's harder to make a big giant one because it will fall apart if you make it too big. So here is a more complicated uh, flower that I've made and the inner part is a separate flower from the out dark blue pom-poms. Uh, so that's the basics for learning moose hair and caribou hair tufting. And you can also learn some more at the Aboriginal Gathering Place here at Emily Carr University. Thanks.